everybody, it's Alice K. Brecklehouse from Threshold of Hineni, and I'm going to share some more about um, figuring out who I am. <laughs> uh, I can't remember if that's what I'm calling this series. I think I'm calling it something else. But anyway, um, and while I'm doing that, I'm going to flip through a journal that I'm working on. I got quite a few people telling me that they really liked that so that they had something to look at. And um, yeah, so anyway, so I'm working on an angel journal among other things. I usually have more than one project going at once. Um, so anyway, so what I wanted to talk about today is about the difference between who we are and what we do. Okay, so I, I've been thinking about this for the past day. And uh, as I've been trying to figure out who I am, um, there are a number of things to take into consideration. You know, there's, there's, my gifts. Okay. And, and you can apply all of this, I think, to yourself. It's not just for somebody who's grieving. We all go through times when we have the opportunity to tweak ourselves and to, or make drastic changes even. Um, there are just certain times in life, and I explained that in the last video, so I'm not going to go over it all again right now. But um, one of the factors that I need to look at is and, and I'm, I'm saying that I need to look at rather than that you need to look at because I'm not an expert in this. I'm sharing with you what I'm learning as I go so that you can hopefully learn from it. But part of what you're going to learn from is my mistakes. <laughs> okay. Because I'm not an expert in this. Okay. I'm, I'm trying to figure it out. Okay. So I'm sharing this with you as I go through it, not after I've perfected it. And I think that that's really valuable. I think that learning from our mistakes, and learning from other people's mistakes is really important. If we learn from somebody else's mistakes, then we can go even farther than them. I used to say to my kids when, when I was raising them, be creative, do not, don't you dare make the same mistakes that I did. Learn from my mistakes and be creative and make your own mistakes. So um, I'm saying the same thing to you. Learn from my mistakes as you see me make them and that way you can be creative and make your own mistakes and you'll just be that much farther than I get to go. So anyway, so, um, so looking at what are my talents, what are my gifts, um, that would be part of, you know, what I would want to inventory. Um, another part of what I want to inventory is what did I learn over the past five years of knowing Bill? And now it's like five and a half years of knowing him. And, um, you know, what did he teach me? What did I learn from him that he didn't intentionally teach me? What did I learn from our marriage? How did I change in our marriage and in my relationship with him? How did I change over the past five years that maybe even didn't have to do anything with our marriage or with him, but I just changed? Um, what did I learn about life from him? Because, you know, he was 20 years older than me and he had a lot of experience, a lot of experience. And so there was a lot that I had the opportunity to learn from. And I was aware of that and I intentionally tried to learn from him. Um, and I, th I think that that's a lot of what made our marriage so successful. I had uh, a friend ask me a few weeks ago if I had it to do over again, would I marry somebody who was 20 years older than me? And I said, yes, definitely. I don't see that as something that I would hesitate doing because to me, that was a big part of the success of our, of our marriage was he was so much more mature than me. And so he brought that maturity and that stability into our marriage. And uh, yeah, I mean, really, that was a very good thing. So that's not something that I would ever balk from or that I regret having done. Um, so, so those are some of the things. Um, what is the direction that I feel that God's leading me in? That's a biggie. Um, what are the things that I want to do with the rest of my life? Because there's probably a hundred. <laughs> Seriously. And I'm 58. I'm almost 59. I'll be 59 in just a little bit more than a month. And well, actually closer to two months. And so, you know, my, my time on earth is limited. I can't do a hundred things. I'm going to be lucky if I can write all 50 books that I want to write for this series that I'm writing. Um, you know, and that may need to be the bulk of who I am as an author if I'm going to finish those books. Um, so, but one of the other things to take into consideration is what do I do? And at first I didn't think that this was something to consider, but 
I think that part of what I need to do is I need to shred apart the things that I do. Are those just my occupations or are those part of who I am? And here's an example. Okay, I'm a teacher. My occupation, my main money-making occupation is being a teacher. I teach Chinese kids in China online six mornings a week, two evenings a week. So that's my occupation. That doesn't necessarily mean that I am a teacher, that that's who I am. I am a teacher because that's my occupation, but that doesn't necessarily mean that that's who I am. If I teach and then I leave that and go do something different, then who I am might not be a teacher. But for me it is because that's my main gift is teaching and I realized um, you know, I've said a number of times, I think more clearly when I'm talking to you all by video. <laughs> and even though I'm like a real introvert and I really prefer to be alone, I love getting up in front of a large group of people and teaching. I love that. I thrive on it. It, it just, it makes my heart sing and it brings out a whole different part of me that otherwise just doesn't get to come out. And, um, and I realized, yeah, I think that means I am a teacher that is part of who I am, not just what I am. Does it make sense? So, um, yeah, so, so that's part of what I need to include in who I am is the fact that I am a teacher. That is part of my nature. That's part of what God has created me to be. And so that needs to be a big part of what I put my time into, what I devote my time to. Um, yeah, I have this in front of me to give you something to look at, but not just the cover, right? Okay, so I actually got this bound and I got some lace on it. So I finished all that. Um, so, so that's part of what I have to think about. Um, when I'm writing, because I am a writer, that's not just an occupation, that's part of who I am. When I'm writing, I teach. Even in my novels, I teach. Um, I like to tell people that part of what they get in my novels is stealth theology because you get taught theology painlessly and without even knowing that you're being taught. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, so a big part of who I am as a teacher and that needs to be a big part of how I plan for myself and what I plan for myself for the rest of my life is teaching. Um, so yeah, okay, so that's, I think I'm going to stop there. That's a big enough concept for one video and the next thing that I want to talk about is more personal and, um, but I think you can still get something from it it's more personal and it will probably take up more time. So I'm going to stop here with this video and start with another one, which you'll probably see in a day or two. All right. I love you all. I'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.